July 2007, after more than 30 years, Grenville Christian College was closing its doors. Thousands of students have been given a supposedly Anglican education here. But for some, it was a place of hurt, of shaming, of abuse, and scars that have never healed. And on this day, the closing celebration for former students. What might be taken as an apology of sorts from Ken McNeil, one of the former senior staff. And let me say that when one member of a family hurts, we all suffer. And I'm sure we have Grenville family members who are hurting. And we can be sorry for, and we can regret, the role that Grenville has played in those hurts. It was not done with any sense of malice, or any sense of wanting to hurt. I think that all of us wanted to push beyond what you thought you could be pushed to make sure that you became the young people, the men and women that you have come today. But if we contributed to your hurt, I am sorry. Missing from this celebration was Father Charles Farnsworth, the headmaster who'd been with the school at the beginning, who'd run it for 14 years, and who some former students and staff claim was less the shepherd and more the wolf, Sheila Coons. Do you ever think back and wonder what kind of nightmare I went through? Or? Oh yeah, I remember after I left, I was thankful on a daily basis not to be there anymore. But yeah, I think it affected me probably more than I realized at the time. Um, Did it affect your faith? Um, not really, no. Um, I realized that I have great respect for Christianity and uh, when it's practiced properly, but what was done at Grenville was the opposite of Christianity. Um, Charles Farnsworth wasn't a man of God. Um, he was sort of like the Antichrist, really, as far as I'm concerned, yeah. No, it was, it was anti-Christianity that was practiced at Grenville, not Christianity, not true Christianity. Charles Farnsworth's version of what went on at Grenville Christian College may never be fully known. The former Anglican priest, headmaster, who in life was celebrated, met with politicians and government leaders, but who is now vilified by some. Farnsworth died in March 2015. By then, former students had already brought their class action against the school, former staff, and Farnsworth. Claims that they all vigorously deny. But before his death, Farnsworth wrote this about the allegations. The whole reason for being in our mission was to bring these people into the realm of the Christ. We've been accused of many things that I never knew of and never heard of. But I honestly think some of the people have gone delusional. Some of the things they said happened. Some of the accusations of sexual abuse by me, they just did not happen. Farnsworth may be gone, but many former staff are still alive. And many deny that there was any abuse. One of those is Donald Farnsworth, seen here in an old Grenville yearbook. He was a former teacher and administrator and dean of men. Donald Farnsworth is also a key defense witness and Charles Farnsworth's son. W5 approached Donald Farnsworth for an interview. He refused our request, sending this email. It would not be appropriate for me to participate on camera at this time. In a second email, he wrote, I am not concerned over scrutiny. I am only concerned over the lack of truth in matters pertaining to the mission of Grenville Christian College. But we still had questions for Donald Farnsworth, so we approached him near his home, just outside Brockville. Are you Donald Farnsworth? Who's asking? Victor Malrick, I'm with you. Don Farnsworth, he's, he's not going to bite, eh? No, okay. he won't bite. You know, I'm Victor Malrick, I'm with CTPW5. Really? Yeah. Is there a possibility to talk to you about what the, the, the goings on at the Grenville Christian College? Uh, probably not, because there are goings on still going on there now. And uh, so for me to really talk of details would be to maybe jeopardize some of that, that, uh, that going forward. I don't want to do that. Well, there's a lot of serious allegations here of physical sure. abuse, psychological abuse, even sexual abuse. These, these are pretty serious allegations. You were there at the time. Yeah. Yeah, they are serious. Probably they should be tried in court. But you, you were dean of men there, you were a math teacher there, you were head of administration there. 
You knew what was going on at that place. Are these people who are making the allegations liars? Like I said, I'd be glad to say that in the proper setting. I don't think uh, CTTW5, I love the fact that you guys try to root out the truth, but not so sure that you've had any of that yet. Well, if you're not sure that we have any of the truth, why don't you help us out? My father, I miss him dearly. Um, one of the things that he said, you know, when you start making a, a campaign to deny things that people are accusing of, whether, whether they uh, are true or not true, uh, then you start raising issues that, uh, that mislead people even further. Are you saying then the allegations are lies or made up or fabrications? You know, uh, if I go fishing and I catch a fish and I tell you it's this big, I still caught a fish, right? Maybe it was only this big, I still caught a fish. So some of it is true, some of it is not I didn't say any true, of it's true. Some of it's exaggerated. I'm saying that those people probably went to the school and what happened to them and in their perspective may be different than what really happened. I'm just saying they don't know the size of their fish. The truth may eventually be decided by a court of law. But for former students like Dan Michelson, that's not all. What do you hope to get out of all of this? Uh, to heal. The after effects of what happened to me um, then have been so strong, a lot stronger than I really uh, anticipated. Unfortunately, you know, through the, through the, uh, the process of, of healing, you have to deal with the, the, the pain. Is there forgiveness? I don't know. Joan Childs hopes there is. The former teacher and administrator at Grenville and one-time close confidant of Charles Farnsworth has written former students, apologizing for the hurt she caused. Many students will say it never happened because they didn't experience it. They might have been there before it happened, they might have been there after, or they were there when it happened, but it never affected them. But for those it did happen to, I felt like somebody had to say they were sorry. I tried to get Charles to. What did he say to you? At that point, at that point, I don't think he could handle it. He couldn't handle it because it would say to him everything he's done was wrong? I think so, yeah. I think that's how a lot of people feel. But life isn't that black and white. You know, um, it was a great school in so, so many ways. Uh, a lot of kids had a wonderful time there and terrific education. They look back with joy on every aspect of their life there. But that does not um, make it true that the others didn't have a bad experience. They aren't exaggerating. They aren't making these things up. As sad as it is, these things happened. Justice can move slowly. The class action lawsuit against Grenville Christian College was filed in 2008, only a year after the school closed. But it wasn't until six years later, in 2014, that the Ontario courts certified the suit, which represents up to 2,500 boarding students who were at the school through the 70s, 80s, and 90s. Discoveries of witnesses are nearly complete, but no trial date has yet been set. W5 will be right back. And that's W5 for this week. On behalf of all of us, I'm Lloyd Robertson. Thank you for being with us.